530 mark. Um, if you haven't done so already, please make sure to pick up the handouts that are on the back table, some of which will be referenced during uh, tonight's presentation. Stormy night, at least it's storming up to the north. Um, um, and, and tonight is really an opportunity. I was thinking about this earlier and talking to the, the hard working folks who put together tonight's program that it, we, we shouldn't think of it so much as a presentation, as much as almost like taking a tour of a factory and looking at an assembly line uh, or the process of, of uh, building, a, building a, a, a product. And so uh, when, you, when you look at that um, process that's, that's, that's underway, you can look back and see where the parts came from, and you can, you can look, at, look at some of the prototypes and look at where, where we're going. Um, and so I think that's really the value of tonight. And, and you know when you go to a factory, you get to see, you see that behind all those pieces is a whole heck of a lot of hard work and collaboration. And so tonight really represents uh, a, a lot of hard work that ties together our elementary staff, our middle staff, as well as uh, folks from San Diego High who are here, at, here as well this evening. So there will be a Q&A session at the uh, tail end of tonight. And so um, sit back, relax, and enjoy the factory tour. So and I think I think Mr. Mingus is going to start. Yeah, actually, I'm going to and I actually just wanted to um, welcome you as, as Amy did and I want to appreciate you being here. And really just want to celebrate this, this group of people to our left and the work that they do. And it's, it's with a tremendous amount of pride that you can look at such a robust team. And then for us to get to work with them personally and know their dynamic personalities and the qualities and the strengths that they bring to this team. Um, it's, an, it's an amazing thing to set forth the need to have a meeting such as tonight and then watch your team just take that and ride it and put something together that's incredible. So this really represents their work and their dedication and their passion to the students. So I just want to uh, give a round of applause, start with a round of applause for this amazing time. Thanks the amount of hours we put in the fact that both of our schools really working together as one organization to meet the needs of our kids. They are kids, our elementary kids, they're all ours, they're all AEA. So thank you for that. Thank you. <laughs> I think it, I think the proper place to start would be to introduce ourselves because throughout tonight's presentation we all um, have worked together as a team in collaboration um, to share the contents of this evening's presentation. So I'd like to start with uh, introductions of our team, our language acquisition team. Uh, my name is Lydia Dominguez and I am the PYP, the Primary Years Program at MYP. I'm going to try and break that down, keep it to acronyms. Um, tonight with the MIP and the Middle Years program, both IB programs are going to help with that sort of thing. Baby Chief, I'm going to be a 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 Chief, I'm going to be I'm Karina Morales. I also teach Spanish 6, 7, and 8. I'm Adam Davis. I teach Space 1, German, uh, 6, 7, and 8. Good evening, everybody. My name is Cynthia Conrad. I teach 8th grade German at AEA Middle School, and I teach all the German classes at High School, San Diego High School, all for international studies. Alexandra Morales. I teach the foreign language pathway at the elementary school, it's third, fourth, and fifth Martin Nuschke, fifth grade German and English, in the elementary school. And there we go, I teach the grade German as well. Good evening, I'm Sabine Ball, I'm teaching sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. We got, I could have been. Fabian Hofmann, I am a German teacher for a sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. Right. 
So again, good evening and thank you all for being here. This is a fantastic turnout. Um, and we have shared these objectives with these prior speakers. Um, this evening we would like to review them um, for you. Again, our objective tonight as a team are to help build an understanding of our continuum of the ADA language learning from fifth grade into the IB, MIP, and beyond into the San Diego High DP program. Um, tonight we're going to share an overview of ADA IB language programs across both schools. Um, present standards for teaching and learning in brief, that itself is, is a journey, it could be its own current university times five. Um, so tonight is the beginning of something greater, um, looking forward. Uh, and then also explain the systems for placements and progression. And then we'd also like to end this evening with a Q&A questions and answer session. History of the spectrum of Quite a while. We started in 2002, and back then we actually had 2017. And if you just want to go ahead and slide and come back some kind of see what that meant 2017. That's all. That's all of our students who were out there on the first day. Um, so in the basement of the church, so we've come quite, quite a journey in the last 12 years. You need the microphone back there. Do you need the microphone? Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's good. Uh, so in the beginning, we started as a German immersion school. German was always an important part of the process since the beginning. Then a few years later, we um, we started on the journey of our idea. In 2007, um, we were at the Opera for a people at Chico. I think we were the first school in San Diego, the first elementary school was an authorized program. Then uh, 2007, another big step middle school opened. Um, was 110 students in the first year, 67th grade. A lot of those students coming from our elementary school graduating into the middle school. So another big milestone. 2008, we became a posh school, and now that is uh, a weird word. Uh, it's actually a part, that means we're part of a network that is uh, set uh, by the um, German Department of School Law. And that makes us a partner school for other schools. That means we're one of 1,500 schools around the world who have an important um, German program. We receive some funding from the German government. We receive access to networks, so teachers receive training that's funded. So for us, that was a big step to become a PASH school um, and continuously stay in that network and have access to that network. And there is a handout also going around um, with more information on what that means. It actually stands for a partner, a school partners for the future initiative. Uh, 2010. Do you want to talk about that Sure. In 2010, um, we became an Ivy Middle Years program authorized world school. So we joined our uh, elementary school and the PYP, and we're really pro proud to offer a uh, continuum of Ivy education from the PYP into the NYP. And again, uh, the first in this uh, region to offer a continuum of those programs. In 2012, um, San Diego High International Studies, our German continuum began with them um, and continues today. Uh, the program is alive and uh, running and led by Debbie. Uh, there she is. Debbie <laughs> over at San Diego High. Um, and it's significant to note here that in 2013 there was something that was called the MIP, the Middle Years Program Next Chapter. Um, that was something that came to us from the International Baccalaureate Organization um, that required us as an IB NYP World School to make some significant changes um, that came to us from the IB itself. And those, those changes were, uh, the drive of those changes were in an effort to better align the continuum from the PYP into the NYP into the DP, with the NYP being the middle child. And so there were some quite requirements that were um, were made of us as an IB work at NYP World School. And um, in 2013 and 14, our team of World School teachers worked really hard and continued to work hard um, to meet those requirements. So um, today you're going to hear a reference to phases. That was part of the next chapter. We went from levels. To phases. So when we refer to our courses in the middle school, we refer to phases. That was um, a part of the next chapter within the MIP. And then, exciting to note as well, that in 2007, um, a high school task force has been created 
and that those individuals who will begin their work in January um, visioning forward uh, what could be um, the introduction of a projected high school in 2017 or so I think I think that historical context is especially important. Um, Beard had shared with you the 2002 pictures. I came to the organization in 2003 with Ms. Dalter that same year, um, and since then, um, this was the last snapshot, panoramic snapshots we had of our school, um, the growth that both schools have occurred at, within both schools and across schools significantly. <coughs> So tonight, of course, our objective is to talk about the continuum. So it's important to define what a continuum is before we, we, go, we go deeper. Um, a continuum, as defined by the International Baccalaureate, provides a visual representation of developmental stages of learning. They can be very useful for teachers, students, and yourselves as parents uh, when applied to skills development. They show a progression of achievement and can identify where a student has reached in relation to that learning process. Tonight, you're holding your hand something that you should have picked up on the back table. Um, we'd like to introduce to you this document. Um, it is the Language Acquisition Continuum. Um, we'll be making a reference to that document throughout our presentation this evening. The team that, should you go back for a moment, Damien, uh, the team, the Language Acquisition Team, um, during the last months of collaboration, uh, develop our own definition of a continuum specific to our school. And it is this. The AEA language acquisition continuum is a data-driven, coherent sequence of learning experiences and outcomes which embody the characteristics and values of the AEA, the PYP, MYP language acquisition experience. And so this is a visual, visual in the continuum doc specific to AEA programs that we'll be making reference to that is uh, being introduced tonight. I have a few presentations that will explain this document because I know it's like we're just to come up with a chart this time and work on it, but we'll have in the next slide, we're coming back to this document towards the end of our presentation and go over uh, the meaning of the individual parts of it. Hi, good evening everyone. So real quick, this looks a little more friendly than the other one, the German one, but it's something very similar. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, Dirk is a little more confident. <laughs> um, um, uh, in the Spanish department, we have uh, we have cat three categories that we um, have talked about as the language team. And I'm I'm very excited to to say that we are a team, and that's work. You know, we're working together. You know, we we implement what we know about the German program to the Spanish and vice versa. So this is. This is just the work that we all do, and not just because you see the Spanish, I did it myself, and not just because you see the German, they did it themselves. So I'm very proud of, of the work that we've been doing as a team. So um, for us, if you, uh, we divided uh, you know, three, three, three categories, beginners, uh, Spanish is a foreign language, and uh, fluent speakers. We have a definition for each one, just to make sure the parents understand when their students come to our school. Uh, beginner, so obviously it's a student who comes new to the language, no previous knowledge. Uh, Spanish is a foreign language, will be a student who will come to a school and had previous um, classes a uh, couple years as a foreign language, not, the, not as an emergent, just as a foreign language class. And then a uh, fluent speaker with or without formal um, instruction. And this is a student who comes to the Spanish um, it's a native speaker or a student who has taken immersion in Spanish with a formal instruction. We want to emphasize that it has to be formal instruction. If your kid is singing in Spanish, that's great, but it's not a formal instruction. So it has to be a formal instruction in order for, for them to enter this category. And if they enter in beginners, phase one, they move in seven grades to phase one, depending on progress. And at the end of eighth grade, they go to one to um, Spanish. So at the end of the um, eighth grade for Spanish, the exit will be phase one or two, the highest. And they progress. So the highest that we will have is three for uh, fluent speakers. And um, a little later, I will explain how we decide who enters in one category. And at Will you say something about what phase one, two, three means? 
we will discuss that in um, the questions at the end. But yes, we can define where this phase one, phase two. Great. So, um, hello again. It's uh, it's important to note um, we're going to talk about the elementary school and the middle school, but it's also important to note that we have requirements as world schools to the International Baccalaureate Organization, in with the organization of our language acquisition programs. The MYP more so than the PYP, but it's important to note as you're we're building an understanding and we're primarily new and um, creating a foundation moving forward that IB uh, PYP World Schools are required to provide instruction in the learning of a language other than the principal language of instruction of the school uh, from the age of at least seven. And then bilingual dual language schools are not required to offer a third language to their students. Although I can speak, you can speak to historically speaking, we tried. <laughs> Back in the day, uh, you know, clearly uh, the, the program that Einstein has chosen for the students in the elementary school is a German immersion dual language program. We did have a uh, Spanish added, a Spanish edition in the third grade years ago um, and decided that that was not what was best for our students and for the program. Uh, certainly, IB, PYP, World Schools are not required to have a dual language immersion program. That was the choice of the founders um, and as supported by the board up to this day. So um, that was the choice uh, of Einstein and as noted in our charter. Uh, and just some, some notes from our charter itself. Uh, the AEA uses language as a tool to help the learner interpret the world around them. Language is the medium of inquiry, creating an ever-strengthening continuum of IB programs from the PYP into the MYP. So the inquiry-based program in the PYP continues into the middle years program. And then at AEA, um, in the PYP, foreign language acquisition is through an immersion model, providing our students with the many benefits of bi or bilingualism or even multilingualism. And that's directly from our charter. So again, I'm Naomi Gogenberg, a fifth grade German teacher, and I have the easy task of briefly going over with you something that you probably already know which is what our German English School Immersion Program looks like in elementary school. The kids start in kindergarten and are immediately immersed with one week of instruction in German and one week of instruction in English. And German is used as the vehicle of instruction, so they're learning all of their subjects in that language, in both languages. And new kids can enter until the end of second grade. And after that, if a child wants to enter Einstein starting in third grade, that we would enter if they didn't have German already in the foreign language pathway. Yes, and then it come to me. <coughs> My name is Alexandra Rye. Um, the foreign language pathway was created in, in its current form in 2010. Uh, and it's... Um, and it's... Uh, serves students who have no prior knowledge of German language to enroll in AEA a, a in third, fourth, or fifth grade. We currently have two third grade classes, one fourth grade class and one third grade class, um, a total of 104 students, and they enjoy uh, German language instruction um, four days a week for an hour. Um, their core subjects, math and IB, are taught in German, and so the German is strictly to teach the learners of one language. We address reading and writing and speaking and listening, visual and communication skills. We do, we do a lot of cultural um, activities and creative projects, and we just have a lot of fun. Uh, and we pray to you. All right, so um, on to the middle school and building an understanding of what language acquisition, which is the title of the MYP course, um, looks like in grade in the middle school. Uh, important to note that the aim of the International Baccalaureate, regardless of if you're a UIP, MYP, or diploma program student, is uh, committed to supporting multilingualism as fundamental to increasing intercultural understanding and international mindedness and growing bilingual learners. Language acquisition in the middle school or in a middle years program is one of eight co-equal subject areas. Teaching and learning in the language acquisition subject group is organized into six phases. At Einstein, we reach up to four phases. And then the, the, 
because the German or Spanish teachers, teachers will speak to those bases later in the presentation. Um, all teaching, learning, and assessment is, um, um, is organized under four communicative processes. We call them criteria based upon pre-established learning objectives and criteria that come directly from the International Baccalaureate Organization. Those are here, criteria A, B, C, and D. And what lives within these comprehending spoken and visual texts, comprehending spoken and written texts, communicating in response to spoken, written, and visual texts, and criteria D, using language in spoken and written form, are these macro skills of language. So within those criteria, um, our language acquisition teachers um, are building skills in listening, reading, writing, speaking, viewing, and interpreting. Those are requirements of us um, from the International Baccalaureate Organization. At Einstein Middle School, we've chosen uh, German and Spanish to offer both German and Spanish as a language acquisition option when you enter into the middle school. Currently, we have 312 students enrolled in German classes, 166 students in Spanish classes. classes are twice a week, language acquisition courses are twice a week for 90 minutes each, so 180 minutes, instructional minutes, um, with either German or Spanish, and that alternates with physical and health education on a given week. We also have students cycling through what we've uh, introduced this year, which is the language lab. Uh, students complete a language lab within a semester. They're assigned either semester one or sem semester two. Those are meeting on Chrome's and participating and completing up the Duolingo program within that language lab um, as well. So um, additionally, something offered is a Spanish 1-2 class. That 1-2 is a high school course. Um, Senora Morales, Senorita Morales, she offers that class um, during, a, during lunchtime to kids who are interested in uh, acquiring the 1-2 content. Um, at a high school level and, and aiming for the 3-4 pathway into a Spanish class um, when, they, when they leave 8th grade into ninth grade. We'll talk more about that when we look back at the uh, pathways doctor, the continuum doc. And then lastly, really wanted to, to note as well just the cultural experiences that we have that we offer to our kiddos in terms of the German um, exchange program and the travel abroad experiences that we've had to, um, to Latin American countries, both in Ecuador and Costa Rica, um, which students have participated in. So that's very exciting as well to have that cultural experience and opportunity to um, apply the language. I'm going to turn it over to Mrs. Robinson. Um, she is going to explain in brief the IB diploma program at San Diego High School International Studies. I don't know. Um, what, what's uh, a safe place to be with this information is to share with you that um, we've, especially lately, uh, been working very hard to make sure that we understand the continuum. What we don't, in high school, what we don't want to do is speak to the high school program. That wouldn't be appropriate anymore than it would be appropriate for them to speak to our program <coughs> on their site. So if there's information that you want beyond what I'm able to share with you tonight, they are starting their tours and their IB coordinator um, can be contacted and I would suggest that and urge you to go and seek out additional information. But again, I want to respect their program and only speak to how we have made sure that we understand the continuum. So what we know about the continuum and, and the goal being um, a diploma, the IB diploma. So if you want your student to get an IB diploma, how do they have to enter high school in order for that to happen? They have to enter high school at no less than a 3-4 level in order to get the high school diploma, the IB diploma. So, we, and we've been looking at that very closely because we had students entering at the 5-6 level, um, and that is not necessary in order to get the IB diploma. There is an important difference. When you go to high school, you have six subject areas for IB. You have to test in all six of those subjects. Three of those have to be a high-level test, Three of those have to be a standard level test. That's the nature of IB at the high school level. If you enter high school at phase three, four, you will have to test at a standard level. So if for some reason it was very important to you to test at the high level, which I have exhaustively confirmed, it has no impact on the, the nature of your IB diploma. It doesn't look any differently. It doesn't affect the, your abilities to what to do with that diploma. Universities don't look at it any differently. 
I've, I've asked every question, every direction that I can think of to make sure that there is absolutely no difference in whether they test in standard level or high level in German. Then, but if you did want to test at the high level, they would need to enter at five six. So that's what we know about the continuum, and that's what I feel is appropriate for us to share with you around the continuum. We're as far as what I think is respectful to, to stand you high and not get into their program. We're really looking at how we're making sure they're getting placed correctly. What we recently learned is that if, if our students' transcripts from um, time middle say 3-4, they will automatically be placed into the 5-6. So what we now know based on that is that we need to start performing the diagnostic exams here on site. So in May of every year, our eighth graders will take the diagnostic that's been written for the high school to determine, even if they are in a 3-4, are they ready for that 5-6? Because it's an advanced 5-6. The 5-6 at San Diego High is advanced. It's not a typical 5-6. That's their decision to offer an advanced. It has to do with the way they run their program. I'll let them speak to that. But what I can tell you is that the IB coordinator is telling us that Few students from any immersion school are able to come in and handle that 5-6. What we've learned is we need to be very careful about the 3-4 on the transcript. So if a student it was in a 3-4, did they take the diagnostic that said they were ready for the 5-6, or does the data show they really were a 3, which means they would then be placed in a 3-4. So that's the information that we've gained around the continuum based on some of the feedback that we've gotten, based on some of the concerns that we've heard around students not being prepared for the 5-6. We have understood that um, that we are sending more students prepared for that 5-6 than other um, immersion schools, but nonetheless students are getting dropped into that 5-6 and they're struggling. So that has really um, pushed us to make sure that we understand the continuum. So that's the continuum piece. I think something else to note too is on that slide, and this presentation uh, will be shared with you all so you can return to it. Um, access some of the information and links in it, but um, Noreen um, Vardy is, is the IBDP Diploma at San Diego High, and she's made herself available to you. The, her email is included there on the bottom uh, of the slide. And then additionally, um, listening to you all and your needs, uh, we would, we're, we're, we're looking forward to offering another parent university in April that looks at the IB continuum from the PYP to the NYP <coughs> to the DP, and we're gonna have breakout sessions. And Noreen will be present um, on that evening speak to the San Diego High program specifically. We've heard about levels and four, five, six and, and uh, standards and let's take a step back and look at what standards we're using here at Einstein and how they connect to one another. So um, we have the Common European Framework of Reference for Languages that we have used as a reference for many years, since 2009, since we started doing diploma testing in Europe. Um, it is actually a very, there is a very interesting background history to that. They started in 1989 in Europe, several countries in Europe said, wouldn't it be nice to have a standard across languages? So when you have a student coming from France speaking German, you have a student coming from China or wherever speaking German, that there is a reference. Um, that we can rely to, that there is an assessment that can tell us, well, yeah, that student is at this level, and that student enters another school or university. So it's that motivation to, to kind of standardize um, the method of learning and teaching and assessing. Uh, the European framework was uh, developed over 20 years um, by several stakeholders um, in the German community. And the focus areas, as with most um, standards in, in uh, language, are comprehension and communication and production. So reading, listening, comprehension, writing, and all communication. When we look on the right here, uh, we uh, took a snapshot of um, the general overview of the uh, standards of the Common European Framework, and that's very broad. They go, of course, into detail for all the focus areas that we're working with, but there is uh, the basic user with two levels, the A1 and the A2, independent user with B1 and B2 level, and then the proficient user, and that's that's a that's a name, speak of level, at a C1 and a C2. So you see six levels spread across um, that um, are used for teaching and for assessing. Uh, and when uh, we as a team came together, uh, when we looked at the new um, 
uh, IB NYP standards, uh, we try to see a comparison. So if we go to the next slide, and all these references will be on the website, so if you want to see the framework, if you want to see this more in detail, what are the individual standards, you can um, see that um, on the on website. So uh, this is now the anti global proficiency scale, which compares to the European scale we just saw of the European framework. Here also we have six levels that are called a little bit different, but basically the uh, meaning is very similar. There is an emergent communicator, capable communicator, and a proficient communicator. And on the left here we see the criteria of assessing. Here also their comprehension and production of language with a slight difference um, in how it is um, assessed. So what we found when we looked at this was a lot of similarity. And so we wrote to IB and said, well, we, um, we have a question about the European framework and, and um, the IB, for, uh, the IB uh, framework for languages. What is, the co what is the connection? How are they connected? And actually came back to us and said, well, one was uh, used as a reference for the, for the, so the European framework is a reference for uh, the IB Global Proficiency Scale, which means that we uh, feel comfortable using our test with slight modification, and this was a slight modification for uh, placement of students into, into phases. So what you see here, the phase one, very similar to phase um, A1, phase two, very similar to phase A2 in the European framework of reference, phase three, and so on, there is a, a, a correlation between those two standards. And just to show you a little bit what the team has done in, in many um, hours of work, we actually cut out all standards on the many colored, quite brightly colored <laughs> boards. Um, and we went and we compared. What is the same? Where do we find the direct language connection between those two? Where they use exactly the same words to describe things. And um, uh, there were uh, so many um, similarities that we found that we really feel comfortable uh, with comparing. And, and it, just to note too that um, the, the notations of the phases here are very broad, holistic statements. Um, speaking to the detail of the phases and the objectives and the learning targets, the benchmarks for the phases um, for progression from one phase to the next to the next, those are also linked in here as well. You'll learn more about those tonight, but in greater detail, there's a really great document linked in here that takes you through each of these. Um, criteria and the benchmarks and the objectives that fall underneath each phase aligned with the criteria. So now, look as we looked at those phases and we compared them to the European framework in the A1, A2, all the way up to C2, um, we might make this document a little bit more um, comprehensive. So what we did as a team, we sat together and we looked at what we, where do we think our students fit, our students fit, and how does that progress all the way into high school. So in elementary, we have our immersion students, and then we have our FLP students on the slide. And then we have new students coming into the middle school at the end of the school. So in the middle school, we have um, established four pathways. Uh, one is a phase two, two, three, the phase two, three, three, and then the final phase three, three, four. Then you see the little boxes um, that are annotated down here that refer to a language diploma diagnostic test that are done at the end of these phases to determine where, where students should be placed, either from the immersion in the FLP program into the middle school as well as from the middle school into the high school. And of course, there's always teacher recommendation. There's always um, teachers are the experts that are your students. They see your students every day. We, of course, also use teacher recommendation for placement. The next level. Um, as Principal Robinson mentioned earlier, an advanced level 5-6 is a very high level. Um, there is no regular 5-6, so there is a big step between the level 3-4 and an advanced level 5-6. Um, there's actually two levels in between because we're skipping a 5-6 and but there is an advanced 5-6. So that is a step that um, is determined um, at the end of 8th grade um, through assessment. Um, there, we didn't want to put errors all over to make this not the completely confusing, uh, but there is of course also movement between phases possible uh, to some extent. Uh, any, anything else I can elaborate on this? I'm kind of a moment here. I think it, maybe just take a moment and pause and consider your the student and your child in mind. 
um, turn and talk to the person next to you. Talk your way through a pathway. Take a second, try to make sense of this for your student mind. Or, and if there's any questions, reserve those for um, the Q&A session. Just take a moment to talk through this or to think through this with your student or child in mind. We work really hard. <laughs> Visual representation of the flow of the theory. Okay, questions that happen here. Yes, so and this is a great question too. This is an opportunity for you to transfer some of what you've learned to the context of this document. FLP is foreign language pathway. So that's our ride. to our language acquisition teachers um, to speak more about, specifically about some of these pathways and the placements and the diagnostics and the assessments um, used for those, that all face placement is pending progress. So progress on those diagnostics and those assessments. It's important to know. And then additionally, as Gary had said, to reiterate that placement is determined um, as well at the recommendation of um, our fantastic teachers. their professional recommendations and judgments. All right, so I'm going to turn it over to Michelle. Good evening again. I want to talk very briefly about placement into middle school, coming into middle school. And if you look on here, we have four language pathway students coming from elementary school. And uh, this time, or this year for the first time, it will take the, they will take the A1 German language diploma. And for the immersion students who come in, we do that now for many years, we take the A2 German language diploma, and based on the results, we will place in the middle school. It won't be just from the one language diploma test at the end of the year. We also want to share the results of the pre-test. So, as you heard before, it's all data driven, and we want to give our middle school teachers the most data. And uh, so we use, as I said, the pre-test in January and send the actual test at the end of the year. And as I said, we will share the present in the shared data. No? Enroll in Spanish, 
so they still have the opportunity to learn the language and if they decide to switch to German in high school, they're ready. This is an optional class um, and it, it happens during their lunch, in my lunch, twice a week. So um, that's, those are um, the placements I'll be doing for Spanish. Council would just like to know too, some of the bullets. The current placement test is Brina mentioned are created by our Einstein Middle School Spanish teachers, but Barb also mentioned um, that we were working in collaboration with San Diego High to use their diagnostic test, not just for Spanish, but also for German, and hoping to be able to administer those um, before kids have set to high school classes. Are you using the European framework exam for Spanish also like you are for German? That's the DEVIC. So we are looking at that. Um, absolutely. Um, so the Spanish ESD equivalent is called the DEVIC, and so the uh, middle school the Spanish team is, is actually looking at that possibility, um, and that would be fantastic if we could, if we could use that exam, which would be parallel to CSC for, for German students. Under investigation. If you know anything about it, please talk to us. <laughs> okay, the placement pathways of German from grades 6 through 8. Um, IB, MRP, language acquisition course. Um, Makes the students move through the phases um, depending on progress. That's a very, very important phrase for you to remember. Everything is depending on progress. Internal assessment results, for example, the pre DSD test that some students, I believe, just took in a post class, right? Um, and the professional judgment and recommendation of teacher and department. All those are very important um, items to consider. Uh, and then in grade eight, this is when the students will actually take the DSD B1. And Pablo will explain a little bit more about that because she administers that test. Um, right now, the eighth grade teachers um, are currently um, preparing the kids for the DSD1, the Deutsche Sprache Expert. The so called Deutsche Sprache Diplom, um, and we prepare them for the level D1. It can be taken as a play contest. There are still conversations going on for the um, high school. If this score is high enough, um, the sections, the written sections are um, listen comprehension, um, reading comprehension, and um, writing. The writing the writing part is typically the most challenging part, so um, we prepare students for a coach, and there is even a tutoring going on for the tutoring every Thursday. Um, we wrote emails to parents regarding this possibility for the students in 8th grade who are taking the DC1 test, and um, the test next year will be before the spring break. That's not typical because usually the written part is taken before the spring break and the old part is um, after the spring break. So um, it's coming up soon. So we started this year very early in, um, in December to prepare the kids for the DSD. Um, the, oral, the oral test um, will consist of um, presentations and the kids, they can um, decide on the topic they are interested in for the oral part. Um, and a representative from um, Germany Mrs. Eagle, she is in LA, um, she will come down to San Diego to, um, take, the, to um, take the test, the administer of the test, together with the eighth grade teacher. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs>
question and answer portion, and we're happy to engage in this process with you. I'm sure there's a lot of questions, there's a lot of information. I wanted to start this process by um, communicating with this group that uh, I recently met with a parent representative that spoke on behalf of a group of parents that wanted to communicate some of the things that they had questions about, concerns about around German. And I wanted to reference the letter that you had home. Somebody have the recent letter as well? So this um, letter was sent uh, via email. It is down the, in the back for you. So this letter represents um, our internal uh, evaluation of the program, our internal diagnostic of what's going on in German, and lets you know the areas of focus right now. Certainly this is not an exhaustive list. We're in every subject area. We're, we're always looking to grow and improve. It does represent what we consider to be the three highest priorities right now. So this letter really does try to inform you what's going on when it comes to concerns around uh, are we preparing the students, are we placing the students correctly from English, um, elementary to middle, and are we preparing them for high school? So in response to our own desire to make sure that that's happening, this letter represents that information, it also represents things we've heard from you. So please um, refer to this as much as possible for those questions, and we can use this as a framework. And also the parent representatives that I met with, and I want to thank them for their time and for coming to me collaboratively, and for coming to me as a way for us to move together, to, to move things forward in a way that represents what's important to the parents and what we can do as an organization. So we know there's a couple of, of uh, hot topics right now with parents, and those things are being looked at internally, so this isn't the evening for us to go deep with those things because we need to look at those things internally. So what we know is that we want more German, and we're talking about that. Just today we talked about that after meeting with the parents yesterday. So know that we're, we're, we're investigating that, we're exploring that internally, we're not prepared to speak about that publicly yet because we need to go and look at it internally. So we respectfully request that you give us that time to look at that internally and trust us that we will come back and report to you when we're able to do that in a way that gives you information that we feel is responsible for you. We also know that there's a concern about the quality of education, uh, quality of German, and that's what this document represents. These are the areas of focus right now. Again, I'll, I'll say we're not saying that there's not other areas that we want to continue to look at or that you don't want to share, but this is what we're focusing on right now. So just wanting to uh, communicate those things as we have the question and answer space in the evening. With that being said, please let us know what you'd like to um, ask. Yes, sir. I'm going to start off by referencing the continuum document. Mm -hmm. As it's currently presented, are the uh, emerging students, so phase one, two, and phase two, two, three paths intended to be staffed next year? Right. Is that something that's already in effect? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Oh, that's in place now. Yes, sir. Got it. So, just the, so there are basically two parallel tracks. One starts with phase two, two, three, and mm -hmm. another one with one, two. Right. So how would that transition then happen? Say you have some students in the classroom that are ready to transition, others not. Will you then have different levels in the class? It's a great question. There's a couple. There's two different answers. Uh, in a, any language program uh, that I've ever seen, you are very rarely going to see just one phase or level in a class. Um, it's just not feasible to run a program that way. So you're, you're almost, in my experience as an educator, you're always going to see two le levels, phases, whichever, whatever the school or that you're going to use. So not this represents there could be ones, there are ones and twos in the class. So as a teacher, and one of the things that's very exciting about the work that we're doing together as a team is really tuning in that data so I know where that student is, so I'm meeting their needs in the classroom. So I've got a group of ones, I've got a group of two. So that's the first part of my answer. And the second part is, what if my child's on this 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 track here and ready to move up? And that is also possible. And Birgit had mentioned we didn't want to put arrows all over the document. But it is definitely a flexible system based on your students' needs and our desire for them to be in the correct placement. And I think it's also important just to note, too, back to like the aim of the ID programs, but I think our aim as parents as well and educators is we want our, our kiddos to be bi-literate. Um, so by literate means, you know, proficient in all those different skill areas. What we've learned um, from our collaboration, with recent collaboration with San Diego High, is that a lot of our students have really stellar um, oral skills and listening skills, but um, an area that we're following, um, that the, an area for improvement is, um, <laughs> <laughs> an area for improvement is uh, right, 
<laughs> writing specifically, but then let's not forget reading comprehension as well. So when we're looking at progression from one phase to the next, we're looking holistically at all of those criteria, which we're required to teach to and required to assess to as MYP teachers. But um, the progression is looking at all of those. Um, and writing is definitely an emphasis. And in full transparency, it was very, it was great for us to get to meet with the IB coordinator from the high school. We had a meeting as a team with her where she really supported all of the staff, again, in elementary and middle. And it, for me, it was empowering to learn that that is an area of need for us so that we can then focus on that. So it was, it was, it's really exciting, the direction that we're moving. Okay, well, next question. Yes, ma'am. Um, for the high school, um, this, is, this is a high school that's just, I mean, what's the agreement with San Diego High School? Um, because I didn't even hear that San Diego High School had anything to do with us until like just like a month ago. So, I mean, do, do we absorb this and go back and get into this school? And what's, what's Our the students have preference. They absolutely have preference to, okay. to get into the, the International Studies program. David could speak more specifically to our relationship with our placement of the German teacher at San Diego High. So the, the, the relationship with San Diego High School of International Studies uh, goes back seven years, eight years. Um, and based on the IB, uh, Eighth graders who graduate from Einstein and apply within the appropriate application window uh, get enrollment preference in San Diego High School of International Studies and Mission Bay High School. Those are the two district schools that have, that have IB programs. Um, what's the second part of the problem? Uh, the our placements with the German teacher at San Diego High. So, they, if you know the history of the German program at San Diego High, it's been an honor, and I'm referring to just that particular one of five schools now in San Diego High? Uh, four. 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 A, yeah. It used to be six, I think it's four, but yeah, anyway, no, it's more than one. So I'm referring to just the School of International Studies. Um, they had had a German program that went away, um, and we really uh, saw value in helping to, to support that coming back, and so um, we've we were very fortunate to, to, to have Steffi um, as, uh, and be able to help support that at San Diego High um, through help from the German government as, also, as well as financially through Bill Einstein. So we have a, a financial stake in, in, in that and I think that speaks to the board's uh, commitment to, to seeing that through um, um, as long as, and, and until the point that, I don't want to come back until the point. So, um, we want to really keep that alive and keep it thriving, and, and, and obviously we don't yet have our own high school, so that's a, a great option for us. Um, Mission Bay High School um, does not have um, the, the German program, but we do also matriculate kids to that school. So. A couple of things, but first I want to thank you so much. I was so impressed with the speed with which everybody got together to, to address these concerns that, that we all have and that is very, very impressive. It speaks to the dedication of this group. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Um, thank so you. thank you so much to all of you for that. Really, really, really appreciate that. Um, the one one of the things I was, I was, and once again, my son was very small, but I just heard these rumors that all of a sudden the German program at San Diego High School died and went away, right? And so people were kind of left at loose ends, the right. students. And they were on this track to the diploma, and all of a sudden we no longer can take German. Right. So, do we have a guarantee that there will be a high school? We have experience? as much of a guarantee as we can have. We have David has really worked hard to continue a relationship with the German government. We have Steffi; he continues to cultivate that relationship. There is no indication for us that there's any problems or anything stopping that relationship from continuing. So, while we can't give the ultimate guarantee, it's not ours to make. We are saying to you in confidence, which I think speaks that we wouldn't do that. If we obviously, we're not confident. So we can say to you in confidence that you know all signs say that this is going to continue to move forward, and we should be confident in that. The Spanish one too that Ms. Morales is speaking to came from that place. Came from what well, I want my child to continue to take the German, but what if the German goes away? So we offered a one-two that has previously looked before and after school, and now is at lunch to provide uh, kids the opportunity to be prepared for the assessment. Um, that they must take to enter three four. So again, we can't we can't guarantee what's not ours to guarantee, but we move forward in confidence that there isn't an area of concern, and we certainly would communicate to you if anything occurred that gave us concern. We would be committed to doing that. So we don't have that concern now. 
my, my one other question is the language lab on Wednesday morning. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what that is exactly. So if you could just elaborate a little bit more. What that Absolutely. Is. So language lab is an opportunity, and some students will get it both semesters, but every student will definitely get it one. And it's an opportunity. We have a German teacher present and a Spanish teacher present. The kids are using Duolingo. We were using Rosetta Stone last year. We moved away from Rosetta Stone and went with Duolingo. And it's an opportunity. It's, 60, it's a 60-minute class where they engage in uh, typically 30 minutes of that time is Duolingo, and then the teachers have um, also gathered uh, an abundance of resources, games in German, games in Spanish, so it's just an interactive uh, language opportunity for 60 minutes a week on Wednesdays. It's a 60, it's on Wednesdays, it's an additional resource. We're excited, it's, it's still in development, there's more to come with that, we're continuing to develop that program and, and that class and look forward to its growth and its opportunity to provide 60 additional minutes. And like I said, some students are fortunate to have it both semesters, but every student will have it at least one semester. So if your student didn't have it this semester, or getting ready for next semester, they'll have it next semester. Yes, sir. Can I just ask a follow-up to the previous question? Um, if, if the high school is projected for 2017, mm -hmm. and I know you're not going to make any commitments because you, you can, but there's potentially a donut hole for current 7th and 8th grade students. If, if you don't fund that that program mm -hmm. through where if you draw funding you know, withdraw funding from that to fund your own German program mm -hmm. you, what is what is your commitment or what is your thinking to that or have you even thought of it well I think that our commitment just stands on its own shoulders we're, we, we've never backed down from that commitment so we just we, we just continue that and, and be dedicated to that we've built it into our budget it's an existing expense and we have no intention of not continuing that. The only thing that would get in the way would be the German government. And they they have no desire to get in the way. They were just here last week celebrating the fact that this relationship exists and giving us yet another check. Thank you. So they, there's just no there doesn't seem to be any reason and we wouldn't get in our own way. You know, when we built the budget for this for this new growth, that those monies stay there allocated to that. So again, you know, I can speak in Confidence that, that there's not a concern. <coughs> yes, sir. I have a question about the level of not to speak about my own thing, but certainly no parents, both the both parents are German, they arrive in Germany, mm -hmm. and they speak very, very fluent German. Um, would they be five, would they be level five and six, C1, C2, like now? Not and from, no, the debt, no, sir, they would not. Based on the, the academic skills. Just based on the writing and the reading comprehension. I mean, I'm not saying it's you know, not possible, but it is not what we are finding to be the case. And, if, and we could meet with you offline and show you the rubrics. And ladies, you might know, be able to speak more eloquently to this than me. But I mean, we, we would be happy to share with you the assessments that demonstrate that level, and that might help you better understand. Better understand that. Okay. Um, if they're doing the German pathway, is there an opportunity? Yes. No, well, we do have the Spanish 1-2 that Ms. Morales offers at lunch. It is yet to be determined if that will continue the 8th graders this year. Um, we have some 8th graders that we've made that commitment to and we're continuing to honor that commitment. We need to look at whether or not that is a fruitful program. Well, we're not, we don't have to try that. program is for kids who don't have Spanish. They're, they're kids that have German and that were present and part of Einstein when there was this drop that someone spoke about and then there became this concern, will my student be able to get a DP, an IB diploma if the German goes away? So then, and this David, this was part of when David was principal, this one too was, was brought in to deliberately support those students. So now we need to look at, if the German program is staying and we don't have that continued concern, is this a beneficial offering? For our school, and we will continue to look at that. But as far as like a course that's offered for you know to have the dual language, that is, that's not a consistent type of offering. Um, so on the, the basis that the document that you have there, uh, this is, it says 2015 to 16, but you are it is in place currently. Is that what you? Well, we put 2015-16 deliberately because this is based on the work that we've been doing. So while, you know, we have faith, we, this year we really, really worked on the pathways element of the master schedule and the kids are in proper uh, phase placement, this represents recent collaboration and some adjustments to our thinking, specifically learning from elementary, really looking at that, that wonderful standard work and are we placing them in the right phases. So yes, it exists now, but this represents a, a, a new... A new updated. So, 
Um, the second part of my question then is with the um, taking the eighth grade, for instance, with the phase three, three, four class, do you have more than one of those classes? Like maybe one that's a native speaker oriented class and one that is a not native speaker? Okay. You're, that's going to be the kids at that phase are going to be immersion. That's the immersion pathway. So, and there could be a couple of the other, you know, well, there could be two. If you, it is not, we wouldn't have it. Immersion kiddos would be the ones that would reach that phase, so those would be the kids in that class. Um, FLP kids might find their way in there by the data, but a beginner that started at one, they're not going to get to that place at our school. They, they, they'd have to continue that in high school. So, it, those, the students that are in that class right now, the eighth graders that are in that class, are our immersion kiddos. With the exception of some FLP kids have shown that have shown us that they're ready for that class. It went off. <laughs> Does that answer your question, Catherine? Um, kind of. No, actually, I'm specifically referring to the, the higher. The right. Higher so those kids. are our immersion kids. It's the immersion kids that are speaking. So the immersion kids on that say two, three, two, two, three, and three, three, four. So yes. if you're either in one or the other. There's not two classes for three, three, four. There's not a three class and a three, three, four class. It's one class that's three, three, four. Is that what you're saying? And say that's probably what you'll find. The kids are going to tell us what they need. We can end up with a whole class of threes because nobody's at four. So we, we specifically put the, you know, the delineated that. You know, we ended up this year really looking at the data and Fabian and I had what the model looks like and how that may or may not fit into what we do and come back and report to you as honestly as I can about what is and is not possible. I get a lot of emails, and part of the goal of having the spoke with the administration yesterday was to get people out for just these meetings so that people can get direct information about what the final definition program is about, what the changes are being made, and that any questions that you have, you understand what the answers are directly, and that you feel comfortable going to the administration for any other concerns. So, I'm very happy to see that you're there. Sure and you see, we talked so much last night. She lost her voice. I want to thank you for, again to, for coming to the table collaboratively. You as well, sir, for coming to the table collaboratively in a supportive way of what we really do together, right? And, and understanding that there's gives and takes in the process. Anything else? Really? <laughs> Last chance. Okay. I want to thank you for coming and tell you how much I appreciate uh, your input. Thank you.